The AP Physics, this is part two of the answers video to the week 12 momentum assignment. So we're gonna pick up with question number eight. So in an experiment on a horizontal track, so that's key, there's no, there's no uh, ramp involved here. That means the normal force is gonna equal the weight and a few other uh, implications. Uh, with low but non-zero friction, that's really important. The friction is, there is friction. A student sets a block in motion at time to zero and at time three seconds the block collides with and sticks to another identical block. That means the mass of the two blocks is the same, okay? So mass identical block is key. The motion detector records the velocity of each block at time equals zero to time equals six seconds. So in other words, the collision happened about halfway between. Which velocity measurements should the student use to determine whether the linear momentum of the two block system changes during the collision? Well, we made this point that momentum, small p, equals mvi, even though books show it as mv. It's instantaneous velocity. It's the velocity that the blocks are going at exactly the time they meet, not the average velocity over the entire three or six seconds. So let's read the answers. A, the velocity of each block immediately before and immediately after t equals three. That's when they collided. That is the answer. But you should always read the other selections to be sure that you don't find another one that you think might be the right answer. So B, the average velocity of each block, wrong, not average velocity. The velocity of each block immediately before t equals three, that is correct. And the average velocity, there they go to average velocity again, no good. Finally, D, the average velocity, no good. It's not average velocity. It's the velocity immediately before and after they collide. All right, let's move on. Number nine is a long, complicated problem. So I'm gonna do that on a separate video. It'll be video part three of this answers. I'm gonna move on though, this is part two, and I'm gonna move on to the next problem. All right, 10. A cart of mass, two kilograms. So again, I'm gonna write down what I have here and I want you to start doing that. Mass, two kilograms, traveling at a speed of five meters per second towards cart B. So we should label which cart. It's mass A is two kilograms and velocity of A equals five meters per second. toward cart B, which is traveling north. Okay, so cart, cart A is traveling south. So I'm gonna just say that this is A. It's traveling, to me that's south from where I'm sitting. It's traveling south, okay? And cart B is traveling north. The two carts collide. The graph shows the magnitude of the force uh, F, magnitude F of the force exerted on cart A by cart B as a function of time, as a measure, as measured by a force sensor. If the ground le if the ground is level and all other horizontal forces are negligible, meaning friction, what is the approximate velocity of cart A at 0.4 seconds? Okay. Well, if there's no friction, the velocity here is gonna be the same as it is there, and that's what the graph shows, okay? So the velocity of both carts would be the same. So first of all, what's the initial momentum of cart A? That's what we're interested in. So momentum of A, P, A equals MV. Which equals two times five Ten kilogram meters per second. Okay, and remember, cart A is moving to the left here, as we ha as we have drawn that. Okay, so the momentum or change in momentum is the area under a force time graph. I want you to write that principle down. So, principle.
principle. The change in momentum is the area under a force time graph. So what's the area under this graph? Well, some of you are good with geometry and you can figure out that if you take this half of the triangle, break, cut the triangle in half, and take this half and turn it upside down, it'll form a rectangle like this. But maybe you aren't that good at geometry, so let's treat it like two triangles. So the area of a triangle equals one half the base, that's the bottom side, times the height. So let's take this as two separate triangles. So the base here is 0.1 to 0.2, that's 0.1. So it's 0 0.1, and the height is from 0 to 150. So let's do that. So that's 1 half, 0 0.1. Again, it's not all the way from here to here, it's from here to here. So we're doing just this triangle right here on the left, times 150. And that'll give us a momentum. So 0 0.1 times 150 is 15, half of that equals 7.5. And that's kilogram meters per second. That is a momentum. Now this triangle, this one, I'll do it with hash lines like that, is exactly the same area as this one. It got, goes from 0 0.1 there and it goes from zero up to 150. So it's also gonna be 7.5. 7 so the total area of everything that you see here is equals the delta P, change in momentum, which equals 15 kilograms, 7.5 plus 7.5 kilogram meters per second, okay? Now, it was already traveling at 10 kilogram meters per second, okay? So it's hit with a momentum of 15 kilogram meters per second. Now, which way is that momentum? Well, cart A was traveling this way. Cart B, which imparted the momentum, and get used to that word, imparted. It means put, put on it, pushed on it. It imparted that momentum of 15 kilogram meters per second. So the 15 kilogram, if we call this the positive direction, and A is going in the negative direction, okay? So this is negative direction then it's 15 kilogram meters per second. Now you have to subtract, so this is delta P, change in momentum. So that's the 15 kilogram meters per second put on by B, but it was already going 10 kilogram meters per second, it said, uh, to the south. So you subtract the 10. So this was 10 kilogram meters per second. So subtract, because we, we're saying South is the negative direction, kilogram meters per second, and that equals five kilogram meters per second is the change in momentum. But that's not the question. What is the velocity? Well, we were given a mass up here for kilogram A, and we're interested in kilogram A, not B. So, so the velocity equals mass times velocity. The momentum that, that cart A is now moving at is 5 equals, there's its mass, 2 times V. So you do a little algebra step and you come up with V equals 2.5 meters per second. And since the bigger of the two momentums is the 15 kilograms that cart B put on it, that's the area under this, that's bigger than the 10 kilogram meters per second that A was going, that means A is gonna get pushed back this way. Because you got 15 going this way, 10 going this way, 15 wins over 10, and pushes it five kilogram meters per second this way. So it's to the north, okay? So that's, you gotta specify that to the north, okay? and that would be B. All right, let's keep going. Okay, all right, a block of mass, two kilograms starting from rest, that's key, and you should underline the, key, the number two, mass is two, 
is pushed with a constant force across a horizontal track. Okay. The position of the block as a function of time is recorded and the data are shown in the table. What is the magnitude what what is the magnitude of the change in momentum of the block between 0 and 4 seconds? Okay, so momentum, write down your formula. P equals m instantaneous velocity. Okay. We know m, we need to know the instantaneous velocity at two different times, at zero seconds at the beginning and at the end. Well, at the beginning, it's obvious. It has no momentum. Its, it's position is zero. It's not moving. So it's got no momentum at the beginning. So the change is going to... Okay, well, it has no momentum at the beginning because it's not moving. It hasn't changed position. It's got no velocity. It's not moving, no momentum. So all we need to do is if we want the change to know what the momentum is at the end. Okay, so how do we get that? Well, we have position. Remember, position is x. And we have a formula that x equals 1 half, or change in position, I'll call it, equals 1 half at squared plus v0, initial velocity, t. There is no initial velocity, so we get rid of this. So what we want to know is, if we can calculate the acceleration, then we can use a second formula, which is the velocity, a final velocity, equals a t plus initial velocity. Okay, so these are all on your formula sheet. You just have to become comfortable when to use them. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and figure out what a is. Once I know a and I know the time is going to be four seconds that we're interested in, again we have no initial velocity, then I can figure out the final velocity. Once I know that, I can plug that into this for the instantaneous velocity. Okay, pretty involved. Not a simple problem, but it's doable with the formulas that you know. Okay, so what I need to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to solve for A. So delta X, or they're calling it position, we'll just put delta X equals 1 over half A T squared. We're solving for A. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2, and that gives us 2 delta x equals a t squared and now we're going to divide both sides by t by t squared excuse me these cancel and so what you end up with I'll write it over here I'm going to need the space a equals 2 change in position x over t squared so I can use any two points for delta x and t to figure out what a is. I should be able to use any two of these points here. If the acceleration is constant, or remember what we said, in AP Physics 1, acceleration is always constant. All right, so I'm going to use the last two points. You generally want to use the two points furthest apart, um, not two that are very close together. That could be an anomaly and, and give you a weird result. So we're going to say a equals 2 times delta x is 1.6 change in position it went 1.6 meters over t squared now t is 4 so that's 4 squared so that equals 16 so what you get is 2 times 1.6 is 3.2 divided by 16 and if you do the math that gives you 0.2 meters per second squared for your acceleration okay that's the acceleration that gives us this so now we can figure out what the final velocity is here we got a position of time we don't have a velocity that's what we need so I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to say the final velocity at four seconds equals the acceleration 0 0.2 I'm going to ignore units of measure because they just clutter up the page times time four and that equals 0 0.8 meters per second. That's the velocity here. The velocity here equals 0 0.8 meters per second at 4 seconds. Okay, now we come back and take that and plug it in here. We know the mass, it's 2 kilograms. So I'm going to come up here because it's a little less crowded and say P 
equals m. The i, the mass is 2. The velocity is 0 0.8. Okay, we multiply those, we get 1.6 kilogram meters per second is the change in momentum. It started at zero, it ended at 1.6, so that's the change in momentum. So that's the answer right there. I'm actually going to conclude this video right now due to a technical issue, and I will pick it up on the next video.